Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, new details are emerging about the shooting on the campus of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And there is a standoff on Capitol Hill regarding emergency funding for Israel and Ukraine. Plus, a busy forecast is on the way by this weekend, timing out those showers and maybe some snowflakes as Mountain News at 530 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Investigators are searching for a motive following the deadly mass shooting at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. A gunman killed three people and wounded another in the university's business school building yesterday afternoon. CBS's Omar Villafranca reports from Las Vegas. New cell phone video shows students and staff at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas running from campus as Wednesday's mass shooting unfolded. Everyone's just going through a hard time right now at the school. UNLV student Matthew Felsenfeld captured police rushing in to confront the shooter after he opened fire on the fourth floor of the business school building, killing three people. We're hearing sirens, we're getting text messages that this is not a joke, run, hide, fight. CBS News has identified the shooter as 67-year-old Tony Polito, a former college professor who was denied a job at the university. Authorities say the gunman died in a shootout with two university detectives outside of the building. If it hadn't been for the her heroic actions of one of those police officers who responded, there could have been countless additional lives taken. Late Wednesday, officials searched an apartment in Henderson, Nevada as part of their investigation. They also retrieved several electronic devices from the residence, including a cell phone to help determine a motive. Everything has to be looked at. Why did this guy go there? How did he get in? Why wasn't he stopped beforehand? Were there any indicators? As the investigation continues, all classes and academic-related activities at UNLV have been canceled through Sunday. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Las Vegas. The UNLV campus is just about two miles from the Mandalay Bay Resort on the Las Vegas Strip, the site of the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. Data from the Gun Violence Archive shows there have been more than 630 mass shootings in America this year. We are tracking some nice weather across the mountains into your Thursday evening. Here's a live look from Jackson County, courtesy of the Kentucky Mesonet. You can see as the sun sets this evening, not a cloud in the sky as high pressure continues to dominate the forecast as we close out this work week. High temperatures also above average in the middle to even upper 50s in some areas. But right now, most of us falling into the upper 40s and lower 50s down to 43 for Wise, 53 over in Manchester, also London and 51 for Pikeville, also Harlan at this hour. So again, temperatures not too bad as we go into this evening up on the radar. A clean sweep all thanks to high pressure as we zoom out. You can see that over the southern coast and that will bring some more dry weather into your Friday and also into tonight. Those temperatures back in the upper 30s and lower 40s as clouds do increase. We stay partly cloudy to mainly clear and again we stay dry tonight also on Friday, but those higher rain chances on the way by this weekend. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thanks. The war between Israel and Hamas is now entering its third month of fighting. CBS's Natalie Brand is on Capitol Hill with the latest on the war and the fight on the hill involving U.S. aid for Israel. On the eve of Hanukkah, students in Israel decorated menorahs in honor of the estimated 130 hostages still being held in Gaza. I hope that they get to see their family soon and um, that, they, that they'll come home safely before uh, hopefully to, to still celebrate the holiday. But for now, the fighting between Israel and Hamas escalates, with the Israeli military saying it's intensifying its offensive in southern Gaza, hitting targets in the city of Khan Yunus, considered a Hamas stronghold. We target Hamas, we do not target civilians, and we've been doing everything possible to get civilians out of harm's way while we go after the terror monsters who perpetrated the October 7th massacre. Israel has declared a nearby village a safe zone, and thousands of Palestinians have fled there to escape in coming fire. United Nations officials say there are no safe places in Gaza and the Biden administration has urged Israel to do more to avoid civilians. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers are at odds over an emergency funding package proposed by the White House which ties Israel aid to Ukraine and other national security priorities. 
The Senate failed to advance the bill Wednesday afternoon with Republicans calling for more U.S. border protections. Ukraine is very important. So is Israel. So is Taiwan. But nothing's more important to me right now than securing our homeland that's the most exposed to a terrorist attack and other bad things uh, in modern history. As negotiations continue, the White House says President Biden conducted phone calls Thursday with leaders in the region, including Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Prime Minister Netanyahu issued a warning to Hezbollah Thursday saying that if it attacked Israel, the Israelis would do to Hezbollah what they have done to Hamas. As the war between Israel and Hamas rages on, the Pentagon is once again urging Israel to protect innocent civilians, including members of the press. That's after a report was released about an Israeli tank shell killing a journalist in Lebanon last October. There's been no independent assessment of that report. Today, Pentagon Deputy Press Secretary Sabrina Singh spelled out what it is communicating with Israeli leaders. We continue to urge Israel um, to conduct its operations in a targeted manner um, as it is seeking out a and and addressing a um, a brutal terrorist organization within Gaza. Today, two news organizations and two human rights groups released their findings about the incident in October. All groups say it was an Israeli tank shell that killed Reuters videographer Isam Abdallah. Four Republican presidential hopefuls battled it out on the debate stage last night in Alabama. Most attacks were aimed at former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, whose poll numbers are increasing and has welcomed new high-profile endorsements. She appeared to take all the shots in stride. Former President Donald Trump skipped the debate once again, instead holding a fundraiser in Florida. Last night's gathering marked the final debate before the Iowa caucuses next month. Former President Trump is once again calling the New York civil fraud case against him a witch hunt and corrupt trial. New York Attorney General Letitia James has alleged Trump, his sons, and his companies inflated the value of properties to obtain more favorable loan rates. An expert witness for the defense has argued the complaint has no merit. Trump is now touting the accolades of Eli Bartov, a professor of accounting at New York University. Uh, this is a highly respected man. I don't know him, but he's a uh, expert witness, and he found no fraud whatsoever. He found no accounting fraud whatsoever. And like everyone else, he said, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? This is a political witch hunt. The judge has already ruled Trump and his co-defendants are liable for fraud. Former President Trump is still trying to have his federal election interference charges thrown out. While Trump's team plans to file an appeal, they say the case should be paused in the meantime. The trial judge determined Trump's time as president does not afford him absolute immunity from criminal charges related to what he said and did after the election. But Trump's attorneys want the appeals court to hear their arguments for why the charges should be tossed. Earlier today, the House of Representatives voted to censure Congressman Jamal Bowman for triggering a fire alarm when there was no emergency. The New York Democrat was caught on camera pulling a fire alarm in the Cannon House office building back in September. The building was evacuated. It happened shortly before the House was set to vote on a government funding bill. After the incident, Bowman said it was an accident. He has already pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor. There is criticism against the Biden administration's move to again delay a ban on menthol cigarettes. The new rules were originally planned to be finalized by August, but officials later signaled it would happen before the end of the year. Now the change is not expected until March at the earliest. Some health advocates say the administration delayed the ban to avoid alienating black voters who disproportionately smoke menthol-flavored cigarettes. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, not everyone is able to move credit card debt around from card to card, taking advantage of no interest. Steps you can take in today's Watching Your Wallet. Plus, we are tracking some rain chances and strong winds by this weekend. Your first alert forecast after this break.